Good morning, YouTube. I find myself back in uh, sunny Southern California on one of the wildest ICF pool pours you were ever gonna see. It's actually about four in the afternoon right now. And uh, tomorrow morning, we are pouring 250 cubic yards of concrete on this killer ICF pool. It's gigantic. I think it's about 70-ish feet long. 30 feet across the floor. I'm gonna get in there and show you a lot of the details today. I'm actually gonna probably break this up into two videos. While I'm here, I'm gonna shoot like four videos. I'm gonna, this is Integra Spec ICF. So I'm going to uh, review Integra Spec. I'm gonna do an entire video just on all the prep. And I just got here at like 2 a.m. last night, got up at six and came out here. But I'm gonna give you a, a full walkthrough of the entire job. They've got a bunch of, uh, I span flooring getting ready to go in, but that's not getting poured tomorrow. And then we've got, uh, like I said, this crazy I see a pool. It's got 15 or 20 tons of rebar in it, at least. And I may do some math and update that more. It's all number five on six inch centers and there's two mats in there. And it is, uh, it is wild. Now, um, it also has this tanning ledge that is no joke above the basement. I'll get into how they're approaching that. Some of the stuff I get to see on these projects is pretty awesome. But this tanning ledge drops off into the pool. There's gonna be stairs in there. There's an acrylic wall right there. And I don't think I can show you right now. I'll show you when I get in there. There's an acrylic window looking into the basement. Uh, this, uh, the owner of this project actually came to my very first ICF pool training all the way back in uh, April of 2022. So I've known him for a couple years. This, uh, this property I may have told you in an earlier video, uh, it uh, backs up to Malibu right in Agora Hills. I think Malibu is right over there. Um, but it burned to the ground in the Woolsley fire about four years ago. The entire valley, all those houses, they all burned. Uh, most of them are rebuilt already. But uh, this one, he wanted to go completely non-combustible. He's planted, he's got acres and acres here that are now devoted to vineyard and agave bushes uh, just to completely keep all the undergrowth that gets these wildfires kicking going. Um, but really the, you know, I deal with consulting in cold climates, in hotter climates, in coastal climates where we worry about hurricanes, in the Midwest where tornadoes are our biggest fear. And then I've got several going on right now in California where it's mostly seismic. And that's why we're gonna get into this crazy amount of rebar. Also show you how they bonded it. I think they've got 20 bond points in this pool to satisfy uh, all the inspectors and everything. So anyway, I am going to flip the camera around, hop in the pool and just give you guys a uh, complete walkthrough, show you uh, what's going on. This one is absolutely wild. Like I said, like pushing 250 yards tomorrow in one shot. Okay, so. Let me get to a position where I can kind of show you what's going on here. Um, these straps are all temporary. It's just a belt and suspenders um, method to make sure that this face of this wall doesn't try to move. Uh, should Probably now is as good a time as any to talk to you about what they're doing to finish this pool. They are going to be, at least as of right now, they are going with a uh, base crete base coat and skin microplaster. They've been in touch with skin and um, I think they're gonna have some guys out to uh, you know make sure everything's done right. Skin's still a pretty new product that there's a lot of uh, questions on install, but I've uh, gotten him in touch with the correct people and I think he's going to uh, go that route. And the reason we had these guys put these steel straps on is you can see down here, if I can, I'll take you down there before this series of videos is over. They're doing the structural steel right there. So the structural guys came over and they actually tack welded it to the I-beam and then just screwed, screwed them in over here. So like I said, it already felt really sturdy. The amount of rebar in this thing is kind of insane, but given uh, our location on the globe, makes a lot of sense. These are all drains that they are going to be um, pulling out. Nope, nip, nip, nip. I'm pretty sure I will confer with the, uh, the homeowner about the hydraulic design. Those two are gonna be drains, filtration, drains, drainage. These four and those four, that one up there and all the way around the sunken living room, 
Those are all um, returns, big giant floor returns. They're gonna have monster pumps because something that you guys probably haven't figured out yet from looking at this, this pool is gonna have a spillover the entire way around. Now, I was very proud of and I'm pretty well known for that pool of the year I did. It has 92 feet of spillover. This one is north of 220 feet of spillover. So the hydraulics on this thing and the accuracy of these gutters has to be so spot on and perfect. You know, uh, like this is the house, patio house. The pool begins right here. There's just a gutter separating it. It's going to be pretty awesome. They are putting an acrylic wall very similar to the pool of the year, except the water will actually spill over it as well. Um, you know, the pool of the year, that's the one part that does not spill over. So this is all getting poured tomorrow along with this staircase. The staircase leads down to the big hot tub and uh, living area, as well as you'll be facing the window of the, uh, the acrylic window of the pool looking in. This is a gutter that's going to catch the water that spills over and run it back into the main catch basin. Now the catch basin is shared. These two bodies of water, even though they don't touch, they do share the same spillover because this one will also spill over all the way around. You can see that gutter right there and the one that's formed up right here. And then the two sides over here have infinity edge, which will all get poured tomorrow. This is already poured. I've got um, bentonite, bento bar running around any cold joints. We, we minimized the cold joints as much as we could, but on a pool this size with this grade, like for instance, this was all dug out to this depth. So there's wall that's already been poured. That's, well, I'm sorry, the wall's hollow, but uh, they poured a footing under it that goes all the way up. So that's open. Concrete can spill down. You guys have seen me do that in other videos into the catch basin. It's only a monolithic pour inside of here. And then they've got this ramp going down into the pool from over here from the tanning ledge. The rebar work is actually quite impeccable. I'll show you right there. We'll get into the bonding a little more, but you can see that bond wire right down there. They basically said what they always say, that the four corners should be bonded. Uh, this pool is gigantic. So um, I think it has six or seven bonds just down in the uh, in the catch basin. And then over here in, in the actual field of the pool, it's got several too. I just realized that they've actually got their uh, grade strings. I'm gonna trip and hurt myself. I'm gonna be careful. I got trip wires all over. But I don't know if you can see this, guys, how far down it is. This floor is 18 inches thick. Some of you guys were already going, how the heck am I gonna get 250 yards in a, in a pool? 18 inch thick floor. Again, we're in a very active seismic zone. Um, so that is how. The floor is just gonna eat up, you know, probably 150 yards. Uh, given how big it is, all that stuff up there. And the catch basin is also 18 inches thick and it's another four feet wide. So um, it's wild. Now I do wanna show you a little detail. Obviously, you know I love Fabform. They did not uh, get Fabform bracing for this pool or the house. They were renting bracing, then they ended up just purchasing an old school kind of vertical bracing like the uh, like plumb wall. You can see that up there. But he has been using all of Joey's uh, Fabform's monopore legs to great effect. But check this out. There's so much rebar, he's able to sit the mono legs on the rebar cage and it is remarkably robust. The uh, monopore legs are only good for about 12 inches off of the ground. So the fact that this is an 18 inch thick floor, they wouldn't be much good unless you set them up on a bunch of adobes, which kind of would be a little janky. So being able to sit them on this rebar and have them have a lot of structural integrity like that um, is a pretty tricked out idea and I like it a lot. So kind of give you that little detail. Now, um, next thing I'm gonna show you is why is there rebar verticals going up on the inside of this ICF pool, but it's only on this wall and this wall. And the reason being is this is a house wall and so is this. Now, can you do that? Yes, if I was using a membrane, a, a rental lit membrane or a liner, I would feel very comfortable doing that. But with most of your plaster finishes, if there is ever a failure of the plaster, and I say if, I should say when, especially in a seismic region, when you're using a 
you know, somewhat rigid cementaceous plaster in an earthquake, you're going to get cracks and you can get seepage. And if water can get to the webs in the ICF, it will seep through. And given that those webs communicate with the inside of the house, because as you can see, that's the basement. There's a bar in there and we do not want the basement moist or leaking or, you know, turning into part of the pool. So this is a hundred thousand gallon pool, maybe a little more. Um, we got to protect that. So what they're going to do is they are actually, after they get this entire pour done, they will shotcrete or gunite. We're in California, so it will be real gunite. Um, they will gunite this wall, this wall, and up onto the tanning ledge will be a gunite shell. So there's no cold joints. There's no anything. Uh, there will be a cold joint at the bottom, but we will deal with that with uh, some hydrophilic water stop. And other than that, it's now got a layer of pool separated and it's actually going to have a drain between it. So any water seeps into that gunite and gets to the ICF, it's got a path down and out instead of through and into the basement. So that is why that is. I figured some of you guys with a uh, eagle eyes are gonna ask me, why is the rebar in there? You might not notice it today, but you will notice it tomorrow when we're pouring concrete and there's rebar left on the inside of the pool exposed but it's just on those two walls. All right, so last thing I'll show you in the pool is the sunken living room. We have one of these coming up in the Springfield area. It's not gonna be ready for the uh, August training, but it's most definitely probably going to be going if we do a training in the October vicinity and maybe we'll be pouring it during that. And we will, this one was not mono pour. There's a lot going on. This is a three dimensional pour. I have a design, I have a mind to do something similar to this, but make it a mono pour. The one thing, the reason he didn't is this thing had to be dead perfect because he's got a gutter here that is going to be spilling over. So like I said, the entire pool spills over. The pool also spills over. There's a couch here, cushions and everything else dry. Dry, wet, infinity edge into this gutter, draining into multiple drains. You can see one right there. There's one right there. So those drains, dump back into the catch basin and circulate around. So this living room, and you probably saw from the drone videos at the beginning of the video, I'll probably end it with some drones. And then uh, the pour itself is going to be its own video. It's gonna be quite hectic um, tomorrow. Like I said, we got, I think 20, 23 to 25 trucks on 15, 15 to 20 minute spacing. That's most of the day just in truck time. So uh, we'll see how long it takes. This part right here is even a little bit deeper than the 18 inches. They changed the shallow end grade and bringing more gravel in at the point was kind of prohibitive. So they just have even deeper concrete than 18 inches. So it is going to be massive guys. Um, the view from this pool is gonna be pretty epic. Check that out. Looking at the vineyard in the valley, the catch basins all the way down there. The infinity edge will be pretty awesome from either side. And uh, yeah, so I'll take you down to the catch basin real quick and we'll wrap this video. Um, and then I'll bring you the pour in the next one. All right, so I'm gonna give you a quickie tour of the catch basin. And okay, this foundation here is part of the original house and it's gonna, they're gonna put all a bunch of their pool equipment in it. So catch basin is about three and a half feet wide and about water depth will be about 30 inches deep. So uh, I'm not gonna climb down in there because I've just been in there doing a bento bar so that when they poured that footing under the shallow end so that they could continue to stack block, they, uh, they left a keyway to kind of help with the water stop, but I don't trust keyways by themselves. So I've installed bento bar, that black stuff right there. It's a uh, bentonite and butyl concoction that is hydrophilic. If water ever does get to it, it will swell up inside of that cold joint and stop any seepage. So they've got the little pipes are lights that are going to wash up this big humongous wall. And the, uh, the big pipes are the drains. All these drains will just suck out of the catch basin and blow in earnest back into the pool, creating the boil over or the infinity edge. So the way they've got this thing braced, it is on the, you can see the string up here. They've already got it string straight. We can adjust it during the pour. 
these kickers down here. I mean, this is on, you probably can't tell how steep that hill is. It's a good way to end up laying in the vineyard, trying to be down there adjusting them, but that's why most of the turnbuckles are up here. We just have to hope all this stuff holds. It is in the ground very tightly right now. So um, I think it's ready, guys. I've been over here, like I said, I got here early this morning uh, on very little sleep after the late flight, but um, just wanted to look everything over. And really the only things I came up with to fix was you know, some water stop. I'll show you, there's one other cold joint that I addressed with uh, bento bar over here by the hot tub. And uh, so water stop and uh, a few other little small items. But uh, man, these guys did an absolutely killer job. Like I said, uh, he had a guy with Integra spec in here helping him on the original basement pours and stuff who uh, got the whole crew up to speed. And he came to my pool training. And uh, like I said, he's got an actual pool guy from California because in California you have to have guys licensed to work in Cal and helped him with his hydraulics which we usually do ourselves but he was uh this one's been pretty elaborate I mean I can't even get into how much equipment there is so this part of the catch basin is already poured it was monolithically poured with the hot tub but they're still going to shoot when they shoot all this gunite they're going to gunite the hot tub so there's a cold joint right here And you can see I installed bento bar along the cold joint. It actually runs all the way up and touches everything. So any water tries to seep and it will get stopped. So that's it for tonight, guys. I will bring the next episode will be the pour. Probably won't be as long of a video because I'm going to be so hectic I won't shoot as much. But anyway, Kevin's feeling good. All right. All right, guys, so a little bit of a spoiler alert. The pour went great. It will be in next Sunday's video, and uh, I will bring you that then. Don't forget to check out all3pools.com for all of your ICF and training needs.